Good afternoon everybody and welcome back to the channel and welcome to the second in my series of kit videos on what I am taking to the Silk Road Mountain Race 2023. I now take off in uh, less than 24 hours, so tomorrow morning. Uh, this will be the last video from Turn Cycling Headquarters uh, and today we are going to be looking at my sleep setup. Uh, we will still be looking at clothing, uh, the bike setup, and possibly a video on kind of food and the challenges of food uh, in Kyrgyzstan and on the Silk Road. But as I said, for today, we are looking at my sleep setup. Sleep is always a challenging thing on an ultra race. It's always a balance between getting enough sleep to still be able to ride effectively the next day versus not taking too much sleep and giving up too much time on your competitors and also on your chance of, of making the finish line before the cutoff. Uh, now my approach to sleep on races like this has changed quite a lot in the five years that I've been doing them. In my first couple of years of racing I would stay in hotels pretty much all the time and it wasn't until probably the GB Divide uh, two years ago where I started to do a lot more uh, bivvying out while camping and even on the road event, so last year on Transcontinental, I actually took a full sleep kit of tent sleeping bag mat. Uh, it was still quite a lightweight, compact setup. Uh, my approach when I'm sleeping rough at the side of the road is to get as high quality sleep as possible. So when considering what to take for Silk Road, uh, the primary objective is to get good quality sleep, even if it's not going to be too much. At the moment, my plan is probably around four and a half hours sleep a night, uh, more than I would take on some races, but given the nature of this course, the nature of the environment, the nature of the altitude, etc., etc., a little bit more sleep is going to, I think, pay dividends in terms of how I feel the next day. So I want to be comfortable. Now, the next thing to really consider is the weather conditions, and there's two aspects to that that we uh, riders taking part in silk road need to be mindful of. Uh, the first is the cold uh, and the second is the potential for uh, rainstorms, thunderstorms etc. Looking at previous editions and looking at feedback from other riders we can expect anything from plus 40 degrees during the day in the valleys to potentially as cold as minus 10 up at the top, uh, up at the top of the big climbs and some of those big climbs then tend to have kind of plateaus afterwards so it's highly likely that I'll need to be spending at least three nights, maybe more, in conditions between minus five and minus 10. So that's driven a lot of my decision making around kit to take here. So uh, let's get into it. And let's start with the sleeping bag, uh, because I think that's the first item most people think of when they think about sleep kit. And this really was quite a challenge because uh, Typically a sleeping bag that will keep you warm at minus 10 is huge. They're very, very bulky. So uh, there's not that many small packing yet very, very warm sleeping bags. Uh, people often will go with something like a Spark SP3 from Sea to Summit. Um, PH Designs in the UK uh, make some very, very nice bags. They're also incredibly, incredibly expensive. I ended up going with a small company called Cumulus based out of Poland. Um, which is uh, this bag here. This is the Cumulus x Lite 400. Um, I've actually stuffed it into a uh, Sea to Summit dry bag here. Uh, the bag it comes with stuffs down small, but it won't keep it dry if any water gets into the bag that I'm keeping it in. So it's been in here a few days, so it does tend to expand up quite a lot. Uh, all at weight for this sleeping bag is 545 grams. Uh, it's not so much the weight. Uh, it's more the pack size for me that's important. Uh, but what that does come with is 400 grams of down. Um, so it's a down sleeping bag. Uh, down packs up an awful lot smaller than uh, synthetic bags and does tend to be a lot lighter for the warmth. Uh, 400 grams of down is a lot. And this has a limit rating of minus 7 degrees. And normally I'm good to the limit rating with little to no clothing on in the sleeping bag. Um, 
Another thing about down bags is they have a fill power associated with them which effectively defines how much the down lofts up when you take it out of this bag. And this has a fill power of 900 which is amongst the highest you can get. So what we'll see, I'll take this out and we'll then go through the rest of the stuff and we'll see what happens as I take this out of the bag. Um, because it's like a magic inflating thing. And that's one of the important things when you get to your uh, your campsite for the night. It's important to uh, take your sleeping bag out pretty early to give it plenty of chance for the uh, for the down to loft up and uh, fill up all the baffles in the sleeping bag. So we'll come back and have a look at this at the end of the uh, the end of the video. Um, now, like I say, it's super lightweight. There's not much frills on this. Um, it only has a two-thirds zip down it so it doesn't have a full zip again compromises you have to make um, in order to get the pack size down for the warmth that you need so right we will leave that warming up um, I'll cover this in clothing but I also have the, one of their down jackets which is just amazingly light and lovely um, now uh, down it's difficult to wash it's a nightmare to wash because the down tends to clump together uh, you could then stick them in a tumble dryer with a tennis ball, but they're never the same again. So I always take a uh, sleeping bag liner. Uh, this one is a silk one from Rab. Um, looks quite large, but it packs up super small. And it makes like you feel like you're sleeping in a pair of silk pyjamas, which is lovely. Uh, what it does do, it means you can just crawl into this when you're filthy. And you're not going to get your sleeping bag really, really dirty. Um, so it saves... Uh, prolongs the life of the sleeping bag quite well. Um, also, if I'm down in the valley sleeping overnight, uh, sometimes this will just be enough to keep me warm if it's say 20, 25 degrees, which it might be. Um, I'm going to do this one the other way around, have not taken it out of this bag. It comes with a small bag, um, and again, like down, a silk liner does have this ability to pack up really quite small given what it looks like when it's out of its uh, liner, or oh, sorry, out of its bag. I do find they tend to kind of get a bit bigger over time. I don't know what that's all about. So, there we go, there's the sleeping bag liner. Uh, next up is uh, the mattress or the sleeping pad. Last year on TCR and on a lot of other races on Trans Balkans this year, I just used a, uh, a short uh, sleeping mat. I'm not very tall, I'm only 1m69, so a short pad uh, usually is enough, but the sleeping mat gives a lot of warmth to your sleep. So, again, when you've got to deal with conditions as cold as potentially minus 10, taking a full size sleeping mat is well worth the extra space and the extra weight. Um, this is only packs up just a little bit larger than my uh, short one. Uh, this is a Thermarest Neo Air. It's quite an old one. Uh, I got it when Laura and I went um, bike packing across uh, the Czech Republic and Poland. Uh, it's a, I think it's the equivalent of the Neo Air NXT now, full length mat. I think it's got an R rating of four. If you've not come across R rating, it's a way of defining how much insulating power or insulation uh, a sleeping mat provides to you. Most importantly, it's full length. What that means is it's gonna keep all of my body off uh, off the floor, so away from contact directly with the cold ground um, and will make a big difference to the temperature whilst I'm sleeping, wrapped up in a little tail fin strap there. So that's the sleeping mat. Uh, next up in terms of the sleep system. Now, I used to uh, take the piss out of people for this. Uh, I'm carrying a pillow, but it's it's a super small pillow. Yeah, I used to say to people, well, you're on a race, why do you need a pillow? Just stuff your jacket inside a bag or something. You might wanna wear your jacket. And uh, this is just one of those super useful bits of kit. This will go with me even on a race where I'm not intending to sleep properly because even if you just wanna lay your head down on a park bench or something, having a pillow, it just, it, radically improves your quality of sleep or drastically improves your quality of sleep even. I don't think there's anything radical about it. Um, it's tiny, it weighs like 50 grams and yeah super super small but it, it's just one of those bits of kit 
that always goes in my bag. Pull that out there. Goes up like that. Clamps shut the, it's got two-way valve, or sorry, one-way valve. There we go. Instant luxurious comfort, all wrapped up in a tiny little bag. Excellent bit of kit, that. That is the Cetus Summit Ultralight, Aeros Ultralight Regular Sleeping Pillow. Um, superb. So that's everything that's going to go inside. Uh, and then I will be, what you know, what do I then use to pre protect myself from uh, the weather conditions, uh, from the rain, from the snow, uh, from the wind? A couple of years ago I was using a helium bivy, uh, but what I found was it was it was quite restrictive and often that would impact my breathing you get very very claustrophobic so I switched last year just before TCR to a proper tent now when I say proper tent this is the uh, Nordisk Lofoten UL1 which is uh, small and light so it packs up probably smaller pack size than my old helium uh, for the same weight so the kind of um, I think I've put the poles away already uh, in terms of bang for your buck, it's incredible. And whilst it's not much bigger than the helium, it's big enough uh, for me to get dressed in it. And that's the important thing. Uh, and the other important thing is it's uh, big enough to mean I've got space around the head. So I can breathe uh, normally. I don't get that feeling of claustrophobia. And I actually get a really good night's sleep in it. Uh, the poles are super short. So they'll pack away in a small frame bag quite nicely. And uh, then uh, the pegs are tiny. Pegs are just some lightweight titanium skewers. Uh, and then the tent wraps up, packs up not much bigger than my hand. So it is super, super small. Um, I just stuff it into, again, just into a, a small Cedar to Summit Sil nylon sack. Um, it's quick to get in and out of this compared to the one it came with. Uh, if I put it in here, it stops if it's wet, which it often can be from condensation uh, or rain overnight, uh, then I just stuff it in here and can throw it in my bag and it doesn't get everything else wet. Because the materials are all so thin, um, it does dry out really fast. Uh, but you've just got to be careful with it because those thin materials are not super strong. Um, be careful where I'm pitching it, try and make sure I'm cleaning away any stones uh, from where I'm going to lay it on the ground and just be careful putting the poles in and out and the pegs in and out. Um, but yeah, I've had this for just over a year now and I, it's a really, really good bit of kit. So yeah, that is the Nordisk Lofoten UL1 tent and that is my sleep kit. So very quickly, let's have a look at how this uh, sleeping bag is lofted up in the last 10 minutes um, and when you leave it for half an hour it just it feels like it's inflated so so much uh, so hopefully you can see how just how big that is it's um, it's massive uh, it's, it is just amazing how it, it just inflates so that will hopefully do the business keep me nice and warm through those long cold nights long <laughs> short cold nights in Kyrgyzstan right any questions on my sleep kit would you take something different what kind of sleeping bag would you take on a trip like this questions down below in the comments do uh, hit the like button if you like the video and if you are not already a subscriber do subscribe so you can continue to get all of my content from the Silk Road Mountain Race 2023 see you later